it's guaranteed to be represented in the orthogonal array. That's one, that's one of the essential mathematical properties of an orthogonal array. So if you're dealing with a true orthogonal array, it'll have that property. If you're dealing with a table that has a situation where there's a pair of options that you can identify across two factors and uh, they're not in that table, it's not an orthogonal array. It's uh, pretty much that simple. All right, so this is the simplest possible orthogonal array. Right here, doesn't get any simpler. We've got two factors. We've got factor one and factor two. Uh, one and two. Okay, now, each of those factors has two options, zero and one. Now, not only that, but every pair of options is represented in each row. Well, we've got 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay? Now, this, this particular situation is by no means amazing. You have four rows, right? And 2 times 2 is 4. Well, it's like no kidding, and there they all are, you know, and there was every possible pair is there. It's four rows, okay? Tell me something I didn't know, right? Nothing amazing happening yet, but now here's where it starts to get interesting. Get my highlighter up here again. Now, I got factor one, I got factor two, I got factor three. Okay, so possible pairs of factors. One with two, one with three, and two with three. So I got three possible pairs of factors. Okay, so let's go through each of the possible pairs of factors and satisfy ourselves that indeed every possible pair of options is present. Now again, we have two options per factor, 0 and 1. So we should find the same four combinations that we found on the previous slide, not necessarily in the exact same rows, but they should be there in some row. So let's start with 1 and 2. 0, 0, 0. 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Cool. There it is. Now let's go with 1 and 3. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay. And finally, 2 and 3. Oops. Zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. There they are. So they're all there. Hmm. Now some of you might be thinking, well, wait a minute. Two times two times two is eight. So where are those other guys? Well, they're not there. We're not trying to cover all the triples, remember? Trying to cover all the pairs. So we've covered exactly half of the triples. Which half? I don't know. I'm not trying to cover the triples. I'm not going to go through and generate all possible combinations, factors 1, 2, and 3 to the other. It's 1 and 2, 2 and 3, 1 and 3. Those are the ones I'm worried about. Notice that this has saved me a lot because I added this factor, one additional factor, but Number of test configurations did not increase. Now again, what did I give up for that? I gave up for that complete coverage of combinations. I had that in the previous array. This one, I don't. But again, my bug hypothesis is that doesn't matter that much. My increase in risk is acceptable given the increase in cost that I'd have to pay to try to cover all the triples. In other words, in this case, twice as much. Okay, so what do you do with this thing? Okay, now this has got some interesting mathematical properties, but it might not as yet be entirely clear as to what exactly this thing can do for me. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm recovering from this cold. Um, let's suppose that we're testing a browser-based 
application. And then we go, you know, there's three factors that we're interested in. We're interested in the operating system. We're interested in the connection speed. And we're interested in the browser. And let's suppose that we're interested in two operating systems, uh, Mac and um, Windows, two connection speeds, dial-up and broadband, and two uh, browsers, uh, Safari and uh, Chrome. So we would do this if we say, okay, I'm going to have Windows every place I see a zero here, and I'm going to have Mac every place I see a one here in the operating system column. And connection speed, I'm going to say dial up for every zero and broadband for every one. And then for browser, I'm going to say it's Safari is the zero and Chrome, the C here is the uh, ones. Okay, now uh, I got uh, Windows dial-up Safari, Windows broadband Chrome, Mac dial-up Chrome, and Mac broadband Safari. And I've tested every possible combination of operating system speed and browser, uh, at least as identified here. So you notice that this is a real straightforward process if you've got, say, a um, Excel or some similar spreadsheet, you're just going to do a uh, control H to select a row and then you're going to uh, search and replace, replacing numbers with options. Okay, well that's that's fine except that we, we have something of a problem here in that uh, most of our configuration and compatibility tests aren't going to oblige us by fitting into this little tiny orthogonal right we need something bigger. So we need to be able to select an arbitrary orthogonal right off of that AT&T website. So here's a simple foolproof process for selecting an orthogonal array off of that website. Now one is you, you identify the factors that you're interested in, whatever they are, operating system, browser, connection, speed, the, uh, what, the uh, security software that you're using, any number of things, right? Whatever the factors of interest are. Now, the factors should be, of course, factors that have multiple options. They don't have multiple options. They're not particularly interesting. They've got to have at least two possible options. And there should be some sort of uh, mechanism by which the options could conceivably interact. Um, you know, you start testing combinations of things where it's just inconceivable and they possibly interact. You're off into the weeds of testing. And just remember, everything that you test is something that you don't test. So you have to kind of be careful about this. Anyway, select the factors you're interested in and then look at an orthogonal array and make sure it has at least as many columns as factors. And this makes sense from what I did on the orthogonal array on the previous slide, right? I replaced the headings on the columns with the actual names of the factors. Now, what happens if you find, hey, uh, I can't find an orthogonal array that meets the other two qualifications on this slide. 